Hey everybody, David Burns. If you take a look at this hive here, it's not a huge colony, but yet there's a lot of activity today. A lot of stuff that bees can go forage on. And it, that is normal. But if you look at the entrance now, compared to the hive we just looked at, a hive this big and as active as it was, there's not a lot of activity going on. I mean, it's okay, it's not bad, but I wanna find out why it's not as much as I want it to be. So if you remember, this is the hive that I made a split on it. I made a video on how to make a split and 12 hours later, I came back and put a mated queen in here. And then when we came back to check on the mated queen, we didn't find her, but we found a bunch of queen cells. So I just left it hoping that the queen cells would hatch and that you know all would be well. I think they had already swarmed at that time. This would be kind of like a good video just saying, how do you troubleshoot a hive that you suspect something's wrong? Yep, let's see what's going on in this hive. Got uh, three supers and I leave this super for them year round and they'll overwinter with this one. Um, but these two are mine right here. And then there's a queen excluder way down there. <laughs> so we got these heavy supers to deal with first. So let's smoke them so we don't get angry bees. This hive has been a little more cantankerous. I like to smoke under that hood a little bit. All right. And I like to check for small hive beetle on the top cover and I don't see any. And we'll pull one frame up to see if they're working up here much yet. Since there's not a lot of bees here, I can pull up this middle one without injuring bees. And they're already attacking my face. Okay, so not much there. Another indication that maybe not all is well. So let's go ahead and take this one off. Get a little smoke in there. There we go. A lot of smoke keeps the uh, hive happy. All right. Boy, that helps a lot keeping it at that level height there. Look at the bees on my face already. And Patrick, you got bees around you. Wow. Oh, there's some honey going on up in here. We can pull this frame up. Take a look. So when you're working a hive like this, you got to get to business pretty quick because as the clock is ticking, time's going by, uh, the hive is just going to get more defensive as we go. Okay, that can be harvested. That's beautiful. Yeah. So we got um, several, I would say. It looks like looking down at the top, this one, this one, all the way to this one. Looks like they're capped over. Not so much this one on this side. So we're not hurting to get them off really fast. We can leave those on there a little bit. See if we can get them all filled up. But let's solve the issue of what's wrong with this colony. I see we need to smoke the entrance. We have a lot more to look at in this hive, but let me pop in here and invite you to my live stream this Thursday night, 7 p.m. Central Time. I wish you would join hundreds of other beekeepers. We're going to have a great time. We're going to have some giveaways. I always teach about bees and answer your questions. Check out the link right here. Make a point to be there. See you then. This is a super that I always leave them, and you can tell it's full. It's capped over all 10 frames are capped over on, the, on this super. Now we're gonna take this super off and try to get the queen excluder to stay down. Getting a start there. All right, let's get a smoker going. There we go. Let's keep working this super off. This is gonna be the heavy one, uh, probably 35 pounds or more. Got some weight to it, people. Here's some happy drones to get out of there. Look at that. Drones don't go through queen excluders. So they must have got trapped up there last time I opened her up. See if we can get them out of the way. 
Now we're getting down to where we can find out what's happening. Queen excluder. Okay, frame against the wall, has a lot of bees on it. And a lot of nectar. Since we're gonna be moving the top off, probably, I don't wanna set that against the hive. It'd, it'd be propped up against the top deep. So now we can get to the center. So we're gonna skip along, pull this to the wall, because we don't wanna to have to manipulate frames very long. So I'm putting these two in their new position. It's all just nectar anyway right there. Okay, see if I can see any brood as I get toward this center frame right here. That's one I want to look at. All right, holding it up with the sun at my back. And I only see a frame of honey and no eggs in the open cell. All right, let me look really carefully though. I don't want to misdiagnose this hive. It's, a, it's hard to see what's in the cell, in the back of that cell sometimes. But as you can see, I, got, I have nothing, but they've dried it out where the queen could lay there, but we don't see anything. Put this back in there and look at the next one. We get a little more population as we go this direction. See if, see if we are queenless. I'm gonna hold the sun at my back. It's a very spotty group of eggs. They're not egg, egg, egg. They're just an egg here and there. It's not laying workers. It's a single egg dropped perfectly in the base of the cell. Ooh, that's hard to, hard to judge this. If we found the queen, it would be a queen that we would want to replace for sure unless she's just simply brand new and we know that's not the case probably. So our problem with this hive so far, unless we find some, something else, is that it has a poor queen in it. Yeah, still looking for, I found the queen. She's on this frame toward the bottom. She's dipping her head into cells looking to lay. All right. So I'm gonna walk out away from this hive with this frame because we wanna evaluate it a little more carefully. It's, it's hard to really, for me to see what exactly is in the base of those cells. And I, I wanna know for sure, is the queen not laying good or has she just started laying? Maybe they replaced her, they've been trying to get queen right. So uh, let's walk over to the sun away from this hive. Now this frame has the queen on it. So anytime we walk around with a frame with the queen on it, we want to make sure we don't lose her in the grass and shake the frame too hard or anything. So I know this sounds crazy, but I'm really micromanaging what's going on. I know that, you know, you can make a quicker decision, kill the queen, put another one in, away you go. But is that really necessary? Have they replaced the queen and they're just in a cycle of trying to get a queen and she could possibly be now a, be a very good queen. I just don't want to fire her without knowing for certain. So I'm going to show you what kind of a technique that I'm going to use today is I'm going to cage the queen. You can see the queen right here. She's being surrounded by a pretty good number of retinue. And she's just sitting there and they're taking care of her. They're all over her. So I'm going to try to pick her up and put her in a queen clip. Oh, missed her. All right, let's see if I can get her wings. Okay. Let's stick her down in there without hurting her. There we go. So there's our queen. She looks a little small to me. I mean, not huge, which could mean that she is newly mated or just a smaller queen. I guess she's not terribly small, but I've seen bigger. 
Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I wanna take this back to the hive and I'm gonna shake the bees off so I can get a better look at her uh, egg laying ability. I'll bring it back over here away from the mean hive. But if I shake it, I will dislodge the larvae. I'm gonna use a bee brush. Gotta get to the bottom of this mystery. Why aren't they doing better if they have a queen? Why is it they're more brood? Another thing we're gonna to have to do in just a second is go down to the bottom deep to see if we do see cat brood or larvae, but right now, don't see anything older than eggs. Very little larvae, I guess. All right, we're brushing the bees off so we can see down into the cells better. There we go. That'll help us a lot. We have a lot more to do in this hive, but I wanted to show you the picture that I took. And it does show out of 54 cells, we only have 28% eggs and 24% larvae. And only, uh, well, 50% of the cells here are empty, showing that the queen isn't doing good. Okay, so now we're gonna go to the bottom deep, which I don't feel that we're gonna have any luck at all finding brood down there. <laughs> the bottom deep, this time of the year, doesn't always have a lot of brood, so we'll see. Uh, let's smoke the entrance again. Poor Patrick, my videographer, man. He has got bees all around him, but he's just bravely holding the camera. Do I get paid by the bee thing? <laughs> Well, you wouldn't be very rich by now. <laughs> Yet, anyway. Okay, wow, got down to business down here. So this is just going to be a double checkpoint to see if uh, maybe our queen started laying down here first and there's a lot of cat brood down here and our discussion is over, but I don't think so. We're going to go for speed in the middle, pull up that frame that's going to really tell us all the answers. <laughs> The one in the middle is more in the brood nest area. I'm going to say it's going to have a lot of pollen and nectar on it and waggle dance bees, but no brood. Yep, look at that. Bingo. It's just got a lot of pollen, bee bread. It's usually what you're going to find down there. I got to go with the easiest, less amount of labor intensiveness. I'm just going to replace that queen. It's going to be the easiest thing to do. I'm not going to wait another 10 days to find out the queen's no good. I'm already behind the eight ball. So right now we're just going to leave, put the hive back together and we're gonna leave them queenless for four or five hours and then I'll introduce a new queen in here. Well, as you can see, a lot of times looking at the entrance can reveal to you that something is not quite right. Especially if you have more than one hive, you can compare it to another hive. So in this case, they should be, there should be a lot more bees going in and out. We just don't see that. They're down in population. And uh, there's really nothing else we can do except conclude that we need a better queen in there. And even if this queen is new and she's doing a great job, we're not gonna take a chance to find out. I do have, a, I just caught a swarm and I am gonna introduce <laughs> this queen out of here into that queenless swarm that I caught. And that way we can monitor the queen over there in that box. But in the meantime, we're gonna be able to put a, I'll probably wait about four hours and I'm gonna introduce a uh, mated queen behind candy into this box in the brood area and see if we can get another queen right uh, hive going. But this is a problem. I know many of you experience this and it's hard to kind of figure out exactly, you know, what the solution is. But the best way to tackle a queen issue is keep giving them a mated queen. And I know it's frustrating. That's what I've, I've gotten into a scenario now where it's a catch 22. I introduce a queen, they seem to kill it. Uh, and it, they just can't get queen right. They're queen right, but the queen isn't good enough. Now, if you want to watch the video back when I 
uh, introduced a new queen or went back and tried to find her and she wasn't there and there was queen cells, you can maybe figure out what went wrong, but watch that video right over here. I'll see you guys over there.